Well, hello everybody. You join me in Cofton Park, Birmingham uh, for the annual Pride of Longbridge event that's always held on the anniversary of the factory's administration, which is now 18 years ago. Quite frankly, it feels like yesterday. Um, I've managed to make it in Beatrix today and uh, no head gasket failure at all, but the smell of coolant waffles in the air. I'm only joking. Anyway, let's go and see what humongous amounts of cars are here. Right, first of all, we are going to start at the 200-400 Owners Club stand. Uh, there is a lot of variety here. It's some beautiful, beautiful R8. I don't know what's going on in the corner here, but this is uh, an interesting car indeed. Anyway, let's start off with this one. Woo, it is an R8 Toro with a slightly beige interior with the soft later Rover 25 dashboard that they changed halfway through. Uh, it is a, oh, I can't, can't remember what this one is actually. There's no badge on the back. It could be a GSI. It's possible it is. Um, this one next to it is a K Reg, so very early on, 1990. Uh, Rover 214, I believe. What a beautiful, beautiful two tone going on here. Uh, as we come around to the back, it is, it is, it is an SLI, so slightly off the bottom. Lovely clean exhaust. And then right next to it, we have a 220 GSI. Good grief. These are as rare as hen's teeth now. And I try and roll through these cars as nice as possible. Ooh, okay. We have a T-Series, which means this is a bit rough and ready, this car. It has been a bit boggy today, I can assure you, so there'll be a lot of muddy tyres. Uh, we've had a lot of rain recently in Cofton Park. Ooh, 220 GTI with the spoiler. I love it. I love the patina as well. This is definitely one of those in restoration cars, judging by the back seat. I love the earlier dashboard on these. And then we have a Rover 45 in this beautiful, beautiful colour. Two tone dashboard as well on an 03 plate. Oh, good grief. We have a monogram colour that is just so gorgeous. It's untrue. Uh, I. I was told that the the cost of paint on this is like 500 a litre. I don't know how accurate that actually is, but this is one heck of a nice car, ZS 180. Just the way it changes colour as you go to the back is just obscene. Repainting the door handle would get expensive to match that in. And we have an M Reg oh, R8. This is. No, I believe this is up for sale. I believe this car, particular car, is up for sale. Yep, it is currently up for sale. It is an R8 with the Honda D series and the automatic gearbox. And over here we have the Cabriolet, P Reg Cabriolet. This lovely interior. A 214 SI with a uh, European model, left hand drive. How interesting. And a hot automatic, Hondamatic. I might actually look for a Hondamatic at some point. And we have the Honda D series under here, which I love to see under the engine with the usual rocket cover leak. Very, very reliable engine. Very, very robust. I will absolutely be looking for one of these. And it looks like that gearbox has possibly been rebuilt by the, the color of the aluminum on the casing. Really nice to see. Next to it, a 416 GSI, the top of the range. So you've got that lovely cloth seat. Again, another automatic. There's an awful lot of automatics here. Might make somebody earn off if there's one for sale. Uh, Europe, that's not a Rover. Another 45 in Starlight. Silver. Manual. Very nice indeed. And we have... A Rover Ford, it's a two one, another 216 GSI with the two tones. This is the early version, early dashboard, manual gearbox. We have an early Rover 400 HHR R Reg. Now, what one is this? It is a manual. It might be a 1.4 at some point. I'm going to have to block that out. 420 GSI. And then we have this M Reg. Rover 4, it was, it's a 216 again, isn't it? It is, it's another SLI, and it is another 
automatic Hondamatic D series. We have a 220 GSI here over here, some usual lack of peel. I love this, but this back window arrangement is a bit messy, but it kind of works and I don't know why it does. Love to see cars with a bit of patina. I'm sure the chrome washer jets were not an original feature on this. We have a streetwise, which is always good to see. This would have the Rover IB5 gearbox. Another streetwise. Oh, we have a Mark II 45, and this is a saloon version. Now it looks like this is the connoisseur. It is because we've got the headlamp washers, the alloy wheels the 16 inch nine spokes but it is the saloon version i like the saloon back end it looks a bit bulbous to me the fact that there's no rear wiper is a bit of a mm, i'm not so sure but this one looks like it's being garaged because it's absolutely absolutely like immaculate on the, the paintwork is just you can see it on the camera um lovely two-tone interior beige leather interior Ooh, okay very very old school interior and next to it in quite a contrast is trophy yellow mg zs now these this a 180 it is a 180 indeed in trophy yellow oh and then over here i mustn't leave this because these are when rover and honda started a collaboration this is what you got it is mainly a honda underneath but the original rover 200s they were very different it's a rover vitesse this one with the sporty bumper oh no it's not a sporty bumper it's actually very different left hand drive the seats look comfortable wow this one is a 213 sx so you've got quite a few options with this but these are as rare as hen's teeth now it is lovely to see one of these and then next door we have this l reg slightly patinaed with the usual lack of peel that you get on these rovers from this age again the back window arrangement suggests that it is a gti with such lacquer such lacquer peel i believe it is a 220 gti again with a slide and tilt sunroof and then over here a particular car owned by martin taylor who is a very well known subscriber to me um this is his rover 45 1.8 cvt it is an ixs um which is the one from the top so it would have been the equivalent to like a club se for the later cars uh, with the fish and wheels spoiler on the back really nice interior really comfy uh, rover 75 seats really nice car and um you will be seeing much more of this car oh he's even put the registration plates on so cool really good because people just wouldn't know a cvt unless you saw one um the creeping i am virginia the creeper very interesting the good stuff and then the bad stuff my transmission was made by cabris i have a very bad complexion after 22 winters i'm frumpy all the rest is quite self-evident oh no it's a cvt run for the hills i just love this i love it because that's exactly what people think about cvts and of course oh yes well who do you know whose car is this yes it is project beatrix she's made it and i've stuck loads of information about my channel we will be seeing much more of my own car in future episodes anyway let's get past beatrix bye bye old girl the next one next door is this beautiful cabriolet i do like the color co the combination of the dash really nice I, as someone who is only used to rover 25s and has been around them I, I look at this dashboard and i think rover 25 but actually the 25 dash is basically a later r8 dashboard they didn't change it one little bit and we have the k series with the vvc system wonderful to see oh dear don't look at that Andrew no it's for sale another R8 I, I, there is a theme going to this guys and I think uh, my next car will definitely be some sort of oh it's the 418 SLD so the diesel so the L series would it be the L series or Honda's own diesel uh, correct me if I'm wrong there I'm not quite sure what diesel would have been fitted to these but it's got a turbo 
And over here we have another 214 SCR. You will see a lot of 214s today. That is a two, I believe it's a 400, 416 over there. We have a Rover 25 on a 56 plate. Very late on, very, very late indeed. Some of these were registered as late as 2007, uh, 2008, and I'm sure tales of less. Oh, nice leather seats. They've got the leather seats in these. Really nice to see. This would have been a Club SE, I believe, with the badge completely faded away as they usually go, but looking really tidy nevertheless. Really nice car. This one with its bonnet patina on this G Reg. Oh, it's a 416. This is this is some. Uh, yeah, this is kind of what you would see on an R8, but nevertheless, it's nice to see one in the condition it's in to see exactly how most of these have actually been resprayed. Lovely example, beautiful. Twin exhaust, 416 GSI, another automatic Honda Matic D series. I do like the look of the earlier ones without the grill. I don't know why, but they just look a little bit better than with the grill. I just, it just looks a little bit more original, innocent, pure. Don't know what your opinion is of that. And over here we have the Rover Coupe Owners Club, which we will see some familiar Rover 600s, a car that might look very familiar to anybody with a Rover 45 because it was styled by the same man, Richard Woolley, and you can see the styling cues that they took from the 600 into the 45 and um, we've got lots of parts for sale here which is all well and good automatic which most of them are naughty boy you've left your handbrake off you people in automatics put it in part but don't put the handbrake on naughty naughty nice wheels i do like the look of the front i think they made what is a honda accord and the most honda of rovers look really attractive again we have a british racing green one here on a p reg beautiful looking front this one is looking a bit more patinaed in the paintwork department let's go around to the back it's it's definitely been worse to wear it needs a good old buff up this does but it looks actually quite solid i can't tell what it is we have another one here Then we have some coupes and tomcats. Now this one I believe is a tomcat. It's a left hand drive one as well. Love the registration plate. of a coupe here. Oh, I've missed one out here. Apologies for that. I'm trying to get round to as many of them as possible. Try not to annoy the owners by sticking a camera up their faces. Very nice indeed. I love a Rover 800. Now this is the earlier version. I prefer the earlier ones. It's an 820 turbo, but I do like the ribbed rear lights. I think these are so 80s, it's untrue, and they are so cool. I think with the later ones, I don't like these headlights. I think they let the pre the facelifted ones down. They just look too Americanized. I don't know why, but they make me think of American cars, but they're so sleek with that line. I just love it, love it. One to experience. Rover 800, 820 turbo. Ooh, yeah, okay, yeah. Again, this one is a bit more worse to wear, but the, the truth is, it shows its patina very, very honestly. And we've seen a lot in the, the show so far, and I'm not even getting started. Rover Coupe. Very, very nice. Uh, again, you know, we've got the grill on the later ones. On the early ones, it's been a K reg. You don't have the grill. I think they look better without the grill, but it is one of those things you either like it or you don't. Um, but I'm sure many of my viewers would have different opinions. You have these split uh, folding sunroof, which is quite, in, well, quite an, a quaint idea. Another automatic. In fact, this would be... Yeah, it's a K, it's a K, so this is for, oh, come away, come away, come away. <laughs> really nice L-Reds. I've really got to be careful because if this is for sale, 
I might be tempted. ZR everything. Oi, oi, oi. Very nice. Ooh. A mismatching mirrors and everything else. We have a Rover. Now, this is where they call the 800. The top, the top model was the Sterling model. Um, this was, he's had all the extras, a lot of information on here. Oh God, no, this is for sales. Well, two and a half. <sighs> ah, now this is the manual version. That would put me off. I don't think Rover 800 manuals, I don't think the manual gearbox is rather suited to this sort of car. And we have the two litre T-series engine, which looks really clean little bit of oil but it looks like it's had a lot of work done it's very relatively dry in here my god there's loads of space you could tell it was made for the v6 you could literally stand in this bit very tidy indeed i love to see under an engine bay and over here we have a another coupe k ridge uh, one here, oh my goodness me, uh, apple jack green, oh no, I think I've got the colour wrong, I'm going to have to get the colour right in a second, no doubt I'll put it in the subtitles, it's a SD1 2600, what a beautiful colour this is, and it is the manual version, thank goodness of that, wow, what a car, it stands out an absolute mile. And oh goodness me, that is tidy and clean. That's a bag of shit, mate. <laughs> it, it is now, unfortunately. Now you've said that, I'm not editing this. Now we have a Rover Vitesse. Ooh, okay, automatic. Not sure about the wheels, but nevertheless, a beautiful 800 and another 800 but this is the coupe version now the coupe version is of particular interest to me because i do like the way they've styled the back end of the car they did a really good job why didn't they do a rover 45 coupe you tell me that because it would have looked probably very similar to this in proportions and over here in the maestro and montego owners club stand a very very patinaed austin maestro this is kind of typical of what you'd have seen on the streets you know this is a uh, kind of uh, the scabbiness that they can go but it's lovely to see one that is really honest and this is a t oh it's a turbo diesel wow okay the perkins turbo diesel very rare indeed very simple though very simple and i, I believe that these can just go on and on and on forever it's not these that you should be concerned by it's the bodywork but uh, it's really nice to see one still going seats take me back memories of a child memories and this is a c reg so 1985 mg montego i mean i couldn't name how many of these are left but they're rare as hen's teeth i love the rib lights very similar to the rover 800 lights uh, this is the e efi version so it'll be in the two liter efi wow okay you certainly know where they got the look for the original Rover 800 R8 with the headlights. They're very, very similar styling cues between the Austin Montego and the Rover R8 800. Oh, we have an MG Maestro with the turbo engine, the O-series engine. Wow, and it's carburetor. That's been rebuilt really nicely. Love it. Another MG Montego, but an f reg so slightly later with the lattice alloys beautiful to see on these I'll just look at the interior actually oh slide and tilt oh nice beige dashboard they shared a lot of parts of the maestro they're very similar cars dashboards were virtually the same and here we have a g reg maestro which is very very well looked after it is used a lot um but it's got this beautiful um i think it's henley blue um, I remember these being around so much, so nice cars to see, lovely interior, it just takes me back to when I sat there as a kid, and yes, we have the usual, yeah. And it is a 1.6, wow. And next to it we have another Clubman D Turbo. Wow. 
another club and d turbo with a racing wheel these have a lot of low down torque these engines a heck of a lot um i think uh <laughs> really pokey things an e-reg oh an e-reg maestro city by the wheel trims this is the kind of color i would actually see more often more of the poverty spec versions which nobody really bought with the poverty spec city seats ah it's a city x right so you get a bit more for your money but not too much more with the uh metal bumpers as well the uh the poverty spec bumpers lovely to see this example really nice and we have a montego vandom pla it is a vandom pla i'm going to pronounce it correctly efi uh leather seats absolutely gorgeous leather seats wood cappings lovely dashboard again and obviously we've got the chrome slat across the front obviously chrome mirror cappings these little little bits and pieces are getting very rare and sought after even headlight washers as well maestro van you would have seen these everywhere and this has been wow it's had its fuel pump completely rebuilt how gorgeous is that i'm going to take a little photo just now on camera there we go lovely direct injection diesel very honest a working vehicle as always lovely leaf springs at the back uh discovery rear lights or the discovery used these rear lights 500 l but uh, you'd have seen these literally everywhere there was a period in time where these look exactly like the back of escort vans you couldn't tell an escort van from a maestro van they had almost identical backsides particularly in white which is typical van color uh, montego turbo ng montego turbo Nice decals on the bottom there. And we have a M-Reg late Countryman, I believe it would have been the Countryman. Really practical at the back. Really nice indeed. And right next to it, we have a very, very honest, almost barn find L-Reg example. Wow, with all the scavenous that you would typically have seen. I mean, the fact it drove here is amazing. Sure, this passed the MOT. And over here we have the ZRZTZS register with a load of 45s. Doris, very familiar to see. With the serpent wheels, which I'm not so keen on, but ideally, you know, each to their own. MGZR. Oh, Rover did know how to do their colours. Beautiful Rover 75, but MGZT, sorry. Got my name wrong there. Sort of tartened up the uh, the interior. They made it a little bit more modern with grey and plastics instead of wood. You get the, the wood stuff, the walnut stuff on the Rover versions, and then it was all greys and blacks. Very modern, very sports-like. We've got an MG6, which these are actually starting to come into the show a lot more. Uh, and then we have a late MGZR. I'm not quite a fan of these headlights compared to the uh, 45ZS, but you know they did a good a good facelift for what was a very old car at the time. Trophy yellow, another streetwise down here. Serpent wheels, another ZS there. Honestly, there's so much in this show. We have a ZR160 in black, which really suits the ZR, I think. Really suity. Um, ZS with its lovely wire mesh grill. Really nice to see. I have to be very careful because my feet are sinking into the ground. And a lovely spoiler as well at the back. And then we have a ZT190 with another ZT190 in this gorgeous colour. It's almost purple -esque purple lesson so i think it's a monogram color it must be i was actually looking at some of this earlier it was a lockdown restoration as a lot of people bought them superb another 75 god it's difficult to get around to all these cars another zs 05 plate very late one Ooh, got a V6 version. 
a very nice V6 version. All very familiar. I need some cushions in the back, definitely. I definitely need some cushions in the back of mine, British cushions. Just looks so Rover. MG. ZT, another ZT over here. I'm trying to work my way through quite nicely because there's so much to do. This, I believe, is shot silk. And, um, yeah, again, it's, uh, it's just one of these colours that if you need it respraying, you need to do pretty much the whole car. It's, oh, thank God I don't have one of those colours, but it's so gorgeous. Trophy yellow. Rover really did know how to do their colours. I don't think any other car manufacturer you'd have seen these sort of really in-your-face colours. I mean, this colour... People pay a lot of money to have their car repainted in this sort of colour, but these came out as standard in these colours. Just come to the other side. ZR. Blue contrasted rear front seats. Very nice indeed. ZS in British... Ooh, this is not British Racing Green. It is another one. I don't know what colour this is, but it's not British Racing Green. Ah, getting stuck on my colours, gentlemen. The VVC, which is a very popular modification, if this car came with it, it may have come with it. It's a very, very clever system in, in some respects. Well, actually, it's got the VVC system, but no... Well, that's weird. I thought it had another timing belt. Maybe Maybe that's, that's me confusing things. Maybe that was the VI version. Oh, and we have a V6. We have a 24 valve quad cam V6, and it has been completely done up. You can tell that it's had that sand blasted. I can't get my car to look like that. And um, a new coolant bottle, of which I will be getting one very, very soon. Overall, it looks just as tidy as my one, but I haven't gone through the length of respraying the entire interior because, I mean, this is not factory. They wouldn't have done it this good but it looks gorgeous all the same and that's how you get it done if you did it properly oh next to a rather mundane rover 25 i like to see a rover always prefer looking at the rovers manual so it'd be an ib5 ford gearbox this one is in a state of transition really nice to see zs180 and then we have ZR over here. I don't know what wheels these are, I'm getting clueless guys, but oh it's got drums at the back. I can smell that a mile off. And then we have an 05, oh it's a BX registration, so again this may have been a dealer registered car or demonstrator, whichever one, it could have been either or both. Uh, but I like how he's done the white letters. I quite like that. Again, very compact in here, very familiar. Um, the wiper motor is actually outside of the scutter instead of inside it. That's quite handy to know. Um, I do fancy a Rover 25, but streetwise is. They were way ahead of their time. Look how many manufacturers have actually copied this idea of having a jacked up hatchback. But Rover did it way before everybody else. But nobody wants to mention that because it's Rover. We can't talk about Rover like that. We can only moan about them. Another BX registration. There's a lot of BX registration cars here today. Um, Gunmetal alloys. Ooh, very nice. And over here we have the MG Car Club. Now you're going to see more ZS goodness over here with sticky out headlight washers. With headlights that look far better than mine. And I suspect these are either new or this car is garage because mine are nowhere near as good as that even though I've got them looking better. That is one thing I've been conspicuous about. My headlights look good, but I've looked at a few here today and they're nowhere near as good. And we have a Y Reg Rover 45. Nice to see a Y Reg. Oh, we've just got a Rover 75. Uh, no, uh, MGZT coming through here. Keep mincing my words. Obviously, you've got your plastic sill trim. On the early ones, it's not colour coded. Look at that interior. Wow. A brownie burgundy to match the colour on the outside. 
and manual gearbox as usual and it is the saloon version Ooh, this is uh, something else the x power arguably should rover have been doing this while the company was in such bad condition to be honest with you no it was a waste of time in some respects but it showed what Rover could do when they put their engineering expertise to the fore. It's just a shame that that wasn't allowed to continue. We have another one over here. And we have the first one of the day, the Rover 75, with the modular Ford V8, the 4.6 litre version that would have been fitted to the Mustangs of probably the 1980s, 1990s and early 2000s. The Mustang as I say a Mustang and the Crown Victoria I would say as well what an absolute wonderful piece of engineering and this one has not been overly done and beautified it is as was basically presented from the factory no chrome beauty covers anything like that it's nice to see an example that hasn't been messed about with uh, these are quite sought after cars and very rare and it's even the estate version uh, next to another monogram uh, MGZT 25, 75, another Rover 75 in Wedgwood Blue. We have another Rover 45, which I'll come and look at because, as always, yeah, the clips have gone there. Need the brackets, buddy, need the brackets. Two tone interior, very similar, very familiar. I always pay attention to the 45s at this show because I own one, and the headlights are not bad at all. They just need a good wet sand. I have brought you around here because this particular Rover 45 V6 is up for sale. I am, I was aware about the sale of it and for someone who has actually said I would like a V6, it is very, very tempting. It has got a leather interior, uh, serpent wheels, it's had buckets load spent on it. Um, and for what you're getting, it's extremely cheap. Um, 54,000 miles and they're looking for near to 3,000 pounds and I think that is a steal for what you're getting an absolute steal um, if I had three grand I'd be speaking to the owner right now but I don't unfortunately but let's carry on with a lovely shot silk wow this is this is for sale as well the first up the first of ten built in shot silk with a gun smoke Alcantara interior wow okay and the owner is looking for about five thousand pounds it is a ZR 1.8 150 brake horsepower wow uh, for something so unique uh, you can't go wrong Wedgwood blue classic 75 color beautiful mm, another 75 V8 with the badge falling apart this one however has got a good badge like my car but the headlights no not such not such a good picture there have some more zt's here and there same color just the estate and a normal saloon i'll just come around here to the rover brm stand the brm being a special limited edition where you had these uh fan fancy orange grill beautiful red interior that everybody strips out for the seats um, or did used to do so many years ago now it's kind of frowned upon because you'd basically be breaking a car that doesn't need to be broken but they are the most exquisite seats ever um, definitely a very popular car and definitely probably worth more in value than most but I love the uh, the early Rover R3 early style and we have a new one on the v Reg. You will mostly find them on v regs now this one that's a private registration plate but wow nice cam cover i do like the oil cap as well that's a nice little touch there and then you've got the uh yep i'm sure that will stiffen things up very very nicely but with matheson struts i don't think there's any need but v reg v reg in fact you're going to see a line of them today I think there's about 15 of these in total that have come. That's the most BRMs you're probably going to see in one place, uh, in, in all fairness, because they only made 600 and something of them. Someone's been eager with the paint. Yep, someone is selling uh, repair body panels, which is always useful, especially for sill panels and corners. P-Reg. 
with the cosmos the cosmos alloys are just the most gorgeous alloys for a rover an early rover r3 25 45 mark one and they really are again we've got another strut brace going on the same color as the car very very tidy this one seems to have something completely different going on that looks quite strong actually compared to the others and it goes around all the turrets that's a really really nice touch <laughs> I do like this back bump arrangement on these street wises. I might need a stretcher by the end of today with the amount of walking I'm doing. <laughs> ZT. You will see a, already we've seen a lot of 75 ZTs and that is simply because they are the most obtainable NGR product going. Oh gosh. Oh I'm in love. Cosmos wheels Mark 145 in shot silk with a beige leather interior okay oh gosh the two-tone i need to walk right away you need to get the door see this is what i'm saying the owner has obviously had door handle issues and it cost a fortune to respray and blend that in with shot silk so he's, he's done away with that and just put red door handles on but uh oh dearie me we have another zr Oh, we've got another one. Oh, it's a ZS. Oh, oh dear. It's just beautiful. Another ZS with a familiar setup under the bonnet. Uh, and this is a, a B, another, uh, no, it's a DX registration. So it's a late registered one. Very, very honest. Very nice to see. Very dry. Very dry indeed. No leaks. That's what you want to see. Oh, it's got the BRM seats. That's quite a nice touch, as I've said before. Uh, 54 plate with the VVC system. God, there's tons of space down there with the IB5 gearbox. <laughs> and another one here with a cone air filter, which I have mixed um reviews about that my experiences on my focus are not so good with cone filters uh they tend to suck up the hot air from the engine bay you've got to screw loose uh but apart from that and the heat shield's missing the heat shield's by the way are about 50 60 pounds i found that out not long ago uh so i can understand why people don't want to repair them oh it's for sale 1200 pounds Trying to get through all these this morning. Nice badge, nice to see that. This is possibly garage because the headlights are in good condition. Got the usual bubbling going on down here, but uh, oh, it's got the BRM interior. Oh, right. Do you know what I've said about people taking stuff from BRMs, the BRM seats? I think the red seats go so nicely with this color, it's untrue. I have seen this on Facebook and the first thing I thought about was, if you are going to do this and it, it, it it's literally it's it, it is frowned upon because a brm has been scrapped to supply this car with its seats but if the car's already been scrapped and the seats are available then why not and this is such an appropriate use it's untrue over 25 bn05 Most people prefer this. You get a nice boot lock on these. On these, you don't get a boot lock. You just get a cable. There isn't even a facility on a 25 to use the key like in a 45. Uh, but you, they do supply you with this thing to just lift up the tailgate. But mm, a 214, ooh, 214 SI. Okay, so one from the bottom. So a little bit more poverty spec. Those. Uh, those pattern designs on the seats are very, very familiar to me. Any 80s Austin Rover product would have had similar looking seats. Very nice car. And we have a Rover 600 here. Possibly. I don't know what silver this is because it's very similar. But the seats are very comfortable on these. Uh, Hondamatic as usual. 
I say we come to the back side. It is just there. It goes to a T T reg example. You don't know what engine it is because it's a 600. But at least they provided the boot key. Uh, Rover 75 BK registration and R registration here and over here we have a Metro Mayfair which is quite rare with the latter's alloys. Metro Mayfair would have been the one under from the Vanden Pla, so it was kind of a while well, the top range is where you've got body, body colour co coordinated uh, sides. Uh, it was a little bit less more poverty spec but the seats are really nice the headrests are very comfortable that's what i do now as someone who has actually been in uh, a metro mayfair streetwise 400 on the k red k registration manual gearbox lovely cushions i must get some cushions made up Lovely to see